Can you imagine what it would be like if all the world's bombs were brought together to create one massive bomb with the energy of something no one had ever thought of before? Consider how big it would be, and then consider what would happen if you dropped a bomb of this kind on Jupiter. What are the dimensions of that bomb? So let us know, according to you, what would happen if we bombarded Jupiter, and in the meantime we'll let you guys know what we think of this topic. First, let us tell you something about Jupiter before we destroy this gas giant. Jupiter, which is the fifth planet from the Sun, is the biggest planet in our solar system. It is also the most massive planet in the solar system. Its mass is more significant than twice as great as the total of the groups of all the other planets that make up our solar system. The planet Jupiter is the most massive object in the solar system. Okay, except the Sun. Clouds formed of ammonia and water that float in an atmosphere composed of hydrogen and helium are responsible for the streaks and swirls that can be observed on Jupiter. These clouds have a chilly and windy atmosphere. The famed Great Red Spot is a massive storm that has been raging for hundreds of years and is even larger than our Earth. Jupiter is continually orbited by its myriad moons, which number in the hundreds. Jupiter, like Saturn, is surrounded by several rings. However, in contrast to Saturn's well-known rings, Jupiter's rings are not nearly as bright and are made of dust rather than ice. Jupiter's rings also do not have any moons. Jupiter has a radius 11 times greater than Earth's, measuring 43,440 miles larger than Earth's radius. If Jupiter were the size of a basketball, Earth would be about the size of a nickel. Jupiter has a surface area that is approximately 93 times that of Earth. How far away is Jupiter from the Sun and Earth? Jupiter's current distance from the Sun measured in astronomical units is 5.2, translating to an average length of 484 million miles. 1 AU is the shorthand for the astronomical unit used to measure the distance between the Sun and Earth. This distance is measured in astronomical units. According to the measurements taken from this vantage point, the light's trip from the Sun to Jupiter takes around 43 minutes. On average, Jupiter is roughly 715 million kilometers, equivalent to 444 million miles from Earth. You are aware as a result that it may take the bomb somewhere in the neighborhood of six years to get to Jupiter. Jupiter's time on Earth is quickly ending, even though it is the most giant planet in the solar system. And at this very moment, to eliminate the gas giant, we are employing the most powerful bombs our world possesses. To successfully fulfill the objective, how many nuclear weapons would be necessary? What sorts of obstacles might these bombs, set to be launched by rockets, meet on their voyage if they are fired out into space? And could a single nuclear explosion set off a chain reaction that would ignite the entire planet? Even the low-yield versions of nuclear bombs, such as the ones that the U.S. launched on Japan during World War II, have the explosive equivalent of 15 to 20 kilotons of dynamite each. This was the case even with the nuclear weapons that were dropped by the United States. This exemplifies the extraordinary capacity for destruction that nuclear weapons possess. The fact that they rely on the highly potent energy-releasing ability of atomic fission or fusion contributes to their high degree of volatility. The events that are being discussed here are also taking place in our very own star, which is called the Sun. When bringing these objects to Jupiter, employ the utmost caution. If you commit even a single error, there is a possibility that a fireball that is as intensely heated as the center of the Sun will engulf you and consume you. If the destruction of Jupiter were the objective, it is highly improbable that a single bomb would be adequate to achieve that result. Because of the nature of this potential outcome, it is incredibly fortunate that there is a large stockpile of nuclear weapons on the planet. Removing them entirely from our world is likely the technique that will keep us safest, but we should still pursue it. Are you finding the video interesting so far? Stay tuned till the end to find some more facts about Jupiter. Make sure to hit the like button and also subscribe to our channel. It is difficult to establish a precise quantity because military actions are meant to be kept secret. According to some estimates, the United States of America and Russia are competing for the number one spot in the world's arsenal, each possessing between 5,500 and 6,000 weapons. The total number of firearms in the world's arsenal is somewhere in the vicinity of 12,700. Put another way, there is no more extended point in putting off this decision. Let's work rapidly to remove these rockets from the planet's surface. 
Jupiter may be found at around 970 million kilometers from Earth. This distance can range from about 365 million miles to 970 million kilometers. In the past, missions in space such as the Galileo space probe required almost five years to complete this journey to the gas giant. If we used our rockets instead, this would be fine. Galileo had to move at speed appropriate for the situation to get closer to Jupiter's orbit. A head-on collision with the planet Earth would be all that's necessary. Yet, it would be best if you weren't overly reckless or rash in acting. You must take extreme precautions to avoid detonating another target by accident. It would not be difficult to navigate around the Moon and Mars on the trip around, but avoiding injury when traveling through the asteroid belt would be analogous to traversing a minefield. A staggering number of asteroids can be found in the region of space that extends from Mars to Jupiter. Even if the typical distance between them is a reasonably bearable 966,000 kilometers, there are times when it feels like there needs to be more room. This is the case even though the distance between them is 966,000 kilometers. Jupiter is to blame for some of this, but not the whole thing itself. Several of them will clump together into clusters that are referred to as families because of the enormous gravitational impact that the planet has. The Earth causes these clusters. You had best pray that none of our rockets would collide with any of the 400 asteroids held if you maneuvered through it recklessly, as the Flora family did. Moving your rockets through the Kirkwood gaps is in your best interest to give yourself the best chance of success. Asteroids are extremely rare in this region of the asteroid belt. You won't find any here because it would be dreadful to witness all of the nuclear weapons in our world exploding simultaneously in a blinding chain reaction before we could do what we set out to do, which could prevent us from reaching our objective. As the first of our bombs went off on Jupiter, people on Earth would see brilliant flashes in the sky above them. This would be taking place at the same time as that, in a manner comparable to that in 1994, when the comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 smashed with Jupiter. Yet this only resulted in the discharge of 5% of the energy produced by the Tsar Bomba, the most powerful bomb that had ever been developed. Hence, considering that we have millions of nuclear weapons, we should start counting Jupiter's remaining days at this point. No, not quite like that. Even though our nuclear weapons are capable of causing an explosion hotter than the sun, this would not cause all of Jupiter's hydrogen to ignite spontaneously even if it were to occur. Simply put, it does not have the density required to enable the process of nuclear fusion. Even if all the bombs had gone off simultaneously, Jupiter would not have been entirely obliterated by the explosions. To succeed in this endeavor, it would be necessary for us to simultaneously release the same quantity of energy as the sun generates throughout 160 years. And somewhere in the neighborhood of 1 billion billion nuclear weapons would be required to accomplish such a compelling result, a little larger number than the 12,700 now at our disposal in our arsenal. To manufacture that many bombs, you would require a total amount of material roughly twice as massive as that of Ganymede, the largest moon in the solar system that orbits Jupiter. It is not easy to accomplish when it is more significant than Mercury and Pluto combined. That was far from being as impressive as we had hoped. Watching what may occur here on Earth might be more helpful if you push things to their limits. It would be analogous to detonating a nuclear weapon in the deepest, most isolated part of the ocean. We've now come to the end of this video. What do you think about it, though? Is it going to be successful, or will there be any outcome? Do let us know in the comment box. If you want to know about our Earth and the universe surrounding it, subscribe to Explained Earth, and we will tell you all about it.